A minority shareholder is taking to court Empire Resort, its board and controlling shareholders Genting Malaysia and Kian Huat Reality 3 over the offer to take the US-based casino operator private. According to Time Herald Records website, shareholder David Mullen from New Jersey claimed the offer was unfair in a suit filed Tuesday in Supreme Court in Sullivan County. Kian Huat is an investment vehicle controlled by Genting Malaysia Chairman and Chief Executive Tan Sri Lim Kok Tay. Lim and Genting Malaysia collect Actively control an 86% stake in Empire Resorts via their JV company, Hercules Topco. Mullen, who is seeking class action status by minorities, accused Empire Resorts and its board of not providing sufficient information required to assess the privatisation offer jointly made by Genting Malaysia and Kian Huat. He also claimed that the deal was endorsed by board members who would financially benefit from it. On top of that, the suit states that Lim and Genting Malaysia had scared off third parties party offers by publicly declaring that they would not entertain buyout proposals deemed unsuitable. Mullen is claiming that Empire Resorts is undervalued based on the privatisation offer of US$9.74 per share. The suit sought unspecified damages and called for a halt to Lim and Gutting Malaysia's effort to take the company private so that Empire Resorts can reassess other offers. Representatives of Gunting Malaysia and Empire Resorts were quoted as saying they would not comment on pending litigation. Yinsen Holdings has secured contracts worth 5.4 billion US dollars from Brazil's state-owned oil company Petrobras. According to a Bursa Malaysia filing, Yinsen said it was awarded two letters of intent by Petrobras for the charter, operations and maintenance of FPSO Malim 2, which is a floating production storage and offloading vessel for the Malim revitalization project in Brazil. FPSO Malim 2 will be Yinsen's first vessel to operate in Brazil waters and is one of several bids in the region that the group has entered into. The contract is for 25 years. Yinsen said that following the LOIs, the charter contract will be entered into by Yinsen's Netherlands Incorporated Indirect Subsidiary, Yinsen Boronia Production. The operation and maintenance contract will be entered into by Brazil subsidiary, Yinsen Boronia Servicosti Operacau. Serba Dynamic has bagged five contracts, two of which have a combined value of 163 million US dollars. The other three contracts do not have a specific value as they are on a call out basis, whereby it is based on the work specified by the client. According to the announcement on Bursa Malaysia, three contracts are for operations and maintenance, while the remaining two are for engineering, procurement, construction, and commissioning. For the two contracts worth almost 700 million ringgit, one is for EPCC work from Turkmen Gas, the National Gas company of Turkmenistan, while the second is o for Revenue International in Oman. The remaining three contracts are with SEA Hibiscus, ASEAN Bintulu Fertilizer and Petronas. Serba said that the contracts secured are expected to contribute positively to earnings for FY19. Ex-1MDB CEO Datuk Sharul Azrael Ibrahim Helmi admitted in court to inking a JV between 1MDB and imposter JV partner Petro Saudi Holdings Cayman despite noting inconsistencies in the name. He testified that he only signed after fellow 1MDB director Casey Tang gave him the go-ahead. It has been established in court that the intended JV partner was supposed to be Saudi-based Petro Saudi International, which was decidedly not formed in the Cayman Islands. The dupe JV eventually resulted in 1MDB diverting 700 million US dollars to Goodstar, a company belonging to fugitive Low Tech Joe. Sharul also testified that 1MDB did not have a paper due diligence on PSI when they formed the JV, adding that the team instead had done an oral due diligence. However, the board had still let the deal go through, with Sharul adding that 1MDB had been given the mandate by ex-PM Datuk Sri Najib Raza through Low that this purported government-to-government initiative needed to be done. Minority shareholders of fintech firm Tranglo have filed an oppression suit against Hong Kong-based TNG Fintech Group, which acquired a 60% stake in Tranglo from government PE fund Equinas in October last year. The suit follows a series of events that impeded business operations, including TNG's rejection of Tranglo's proposed financing plan and unreasonable delay in signing up new bank partners, according to a statement issued by Tranglo's minority shareholders. Imperial Asia and Mohammad Hassan Rashid 
Rashid Gerebe, who collectively hold 13.6% in Tranglo, initiated the suit. The defendants in the suit include Alexander Kong King Ong, aka Alex Kong, Wong Wing Chi, aka Takis Wong, Tranglo co founder Xia Hui Yong, and Tranglo. Kong had admitted to Bank Nagara that its 115 million US dollar Series A funding never materialized. In addition, TNG also attempted to install Kong's sister as a required signatory of all bank accounts maintained by Tranglo, according to the statement. The minority shareholders also point out that Kong's previous business ventures, Next Millennium and Asia Travel Mart, were wound up by the government and Technology Park Malaysia for non-payment of taxes and rental. 